Okay, greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, again, we are not live tonight. Uh, I am recording this video ahead of time to drop because I will be on vacation in uh, Oklahoma, taking part in a wedding. Very exciting. Uh, but yes, I thought I would bring these two videos to you uh, while I'm gone, give you guys something to watch while I'm on vacation. Uh, although these videos are going back to my you know, pre-recorded videos, they will still have the same flow and feel of my live streams. Uh, I thought about at least putting in the opening title that I used to have. I decided, nah, I'm not going to do that. At least not right now. Uh, I, I may eventually return to something like my old pre-recorded videos used to be. They'll never be. They'll never again be as um, quick flowing and crisply edited as they were before. They're still going to have this loose conversational flow of my live streams, but I might put some of the stuff back in. And I'm not sure how often I will be doing the pre-recorded thing as opposed to the live streaming thing. Uh, if, at the very least, I will still always have my bargain bags as live streams because those kind of lend themselves to the live format. I pull the bag CDs out of the bags and give you my genuine real-time reactions to them. But anyway, uh, yes, today I am going to be bringing you my uh, the third chapter in my whole darn CD collection. Yes, I am showing you every single CD I have. We are in the middle of doing the rock and pop and otherwise vocals CDs now. Uh, then after that, I will transition to the instrumental, like the instrumental jazz, classical, new age, that kind of stuff. Then I'll do my fringe collections, like soundtracks, uh, holiday albums, and uh, comedy and spoken word. That'll probably be my last segment. And I will also have a video, I've decided at the very end of all this, dedicated to my box sets and home burned compilations, or home burned CDs. So I am basically going to cover everything in my collection. And I may actually do also do a video with my music-related DVDs and Blu-rays. So maybe you guys, if, you, if there's enough demand for that, I'll do that as well. But anyway, yes, as far as my CD collection, I do 90 video or 90 titles in each video, and which is going to come in handy because uh, it'll help me get a more accurate count of how many CDs I have uh, when I get all these together, knowing that I put in 90 in each video, uh, although I added three at the beginning of chapter two because they were ones that I did not have yet in my actual collection when I did chapter one. So, so far I have 93 plus 90 plus this 90 will go and so on and so forth. Yay math. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get on with the festivities. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention, I forgot to mention it until the end of chapter two, but if uh, you don't see anything here in my CD collection as I go through them uh, that you think I would like or that you think I should hear, uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I, it, it may be something that I have on vinyl, or it might be something that I have digitally on my computer, although there's not much of that. I did a big clean out. Not only did I do a big clean out of my CD collection, but I also cleaned out my MP3 collection as well. Got rid of a whole bunch of junk I never listened to again uh, anymore. So anyway, <clears throat> pardon me. Now onward with my CD collection, chapter three, starting out with an artist you probably have heard of before, Bon Jovi. Uh, yes, I actually have their entire studio al album discography. Uh, this one I actually bought at uh, Forever Young Records in Dallas, Texas, when I was up out and uh, visiting Noah first time. Uh, that is their uh, self-titled debut. And we have one that my friend Mark gave me at for Christmas this past year, 7800 degrees Fahrenheit. This, uh, this actually filled the last gap in the studio albums discography I got of theirs. And moving right along with Slippery When Wet and New Jersey. And these are pretty much all of the remastered editions except for this one, Keep the Faith. I am kind of have my out my eyes open for the remastered uh, re-release of that one. And we have These Days, moving along into their new millennium era, I guess you'd say, with Crush. One of my one of the first albums of theirs that I really, really enjoyed and was not like a lot of their other albums. So Bon Jovi purists probably were turned off a bit by the sound that they went for on Crush, and then their follow-up Bounce. And I found the special edition of Have a Nice Day. It's got um, several bonus tracks during recorded during the Have a Nice Day tour. Found this one at a store up in Salem, Oregon, I believe it was. And one of the few things worth buying that I found there. 
uh, Lost Highway, which is which was kind of their foray into country music. That was one of my sister's favorite albums. Then we have The Cycle, I mean The Circle. And What About Now? And we have Burning Bridges, or Boining Bridges. I don't know why I'm speaking in uh, New Yorkese right now. And then This House Is Not For Sale. And finally, their most recent album, 2020, and I actually have the Japanese uh, version, which has uh, two bonus tracks. There's the Obi strip. Two bonus tracks, Shine and Love Can, are the bonus tracks on this one. And then moving on from Bon Jovi, we head uh, dip back into the classic soul era with Booker T and the MGs. This is uh, you saw one of these in my ch in chapter one, the definitive collection two disc series it's got this you know the this square grid layout here along with the artist up here in this font you know how the uh, a lot of the labels out there have their own series of greatest hits collection compilations you know this is the volume with Booker T and the MGs two discs a lot of great classic soul stuff gotta love it and uh, <clears throat> this next one you will remember probably fondly remember from my uh, bargain bags this one was Bargain Bag from the year 2020, I think it was. It's been a while since I've shown this, but yes, Invasion of the Booty Snatches. Yes, it's uh, Noah insisted on, absolutely w was about to forsake my friendship uh, if I didn't send him the CD single that um, I had gotten of the, the Booty Snatches, and then like uh, the next month or the month after, the full album here uh, was uh, showed, up, showed up in a bargain bag. So... Uh, and I'm sure Noah just absolutely treasures his Booty Snatches uh, sing, uh, single. The signal, single, incidentally, was the song Twirl That. I won't actually say that, that word out loud because it's very... It's a little graphic, so use your imagination. If you're good at lip reading, you saw what I said. Anyway, moving on, uh, we have, um, continuing my exploration of uh, Idol alumni from around the world, this guy was the winner of a version of the Swedish Idol franchise, Kevin Borg. This is his debut CD, The Beginning. Very good stuff. And, you know, typical of Sweden in general, but also of Idol's first albums. Very pop. Very much pop, but a lot of good songs on there. So, now these guys <clears throat> were one of my first real, um, first real loves in music with lyrics. You know, this was kind of near the end of my New Age phase. I bought this CD mainly because it was on the same label as a lot of the New Age stuff that I was listening to, but I ended up really enjoying it, and I've just kept this CD in my collection ever since. And this was from 1991, so I've had this CD for 30 years. Yeah, 31 years. They're a duo called Bounce the Ocean, and uh, very much pop. I'm not sure how to describe them other than that, but yeah, very much pop. Might be a little cheesy, cheesy sounding now. If you've never heard them before and you put them on today, they'd probably sound cheesy. But they're a huge sentimental favorite for me. And funny story, I actually, when I had my written music blog years and years ago, I did a write-up on these guys. And one of the two members uh, sent me an email because I had my email address in the uh, the blog description and stuff, and uh, sent his appreciation for. Um, me remembering him and giving them a shout out all these years later. Uh, I don't think they're they're no longer to, together making music. I think I'm, I'm not sure, but I think this guy was still in music. I might be completely wrong. I don't even know if I still have access. Yes, I think I still have that email. I might have to go check it out. But anyway, uh, long story short, these guys have been in my collection for a long time, and that was their one and only album, as far as I know. But uh, it's a great one. Uh, this next one is kind of a peculiarity, peculiarity in my collection. One of the few hip-hop or rap albums that I have. But for some reason, I just I like the sound of the one single, which was actually not on the U.S. release of it. It was on the J Japanese release of it, which is this one here. It is Face Off by Bow Wow and Omarion. Uh, Bow Wow, who is uh, now probably just as famous for his acting as for his rapping, and Omarion, R&B star. Uh, but yes, uh, the single was Let Me Hold You, which was 
as I said, not on the American release. It was a, a non-album single, but it is on this one as a bonus track. So, yeah. It's not one of my favorite albums. I'm kind of not sure why I still hang on to it. It's been actually been a long time since I've listened to it. I need to listen to it again. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. One of the str weird reasons I have this is because uh, the Japanese ver version was the only one that was in a jewel case. The American one was just in the digipack. So probably a dumb reason to hang on to it, but hey, what the hell. Uh, next one is an artist that you probably know. You've probably heard of this guy, David Bowie. I would assume you've heard of him. Uh, Ziggy Stardust, uh, the what I think is his best album, though I have not listened to all of his albums. I've only listened to a few, actually. But this is my favorite one of his yet. And this is the Ryko disc release from 1990. It has a few bonus tracks on it. Or five bonus tracks, actually. Uh, a couple of them are demos. But the disc is in pretty... Well, I guess not as bad a shape as I remember it being in. But uh, yes, as you can probably kind of see, it's got a few... Uh, yeah, there you can see it's got quite a few scratches on it. Uh, but it's still listenable. It's still playable. I uh, think I found this in the freebies bin. Either there or it was in the $1 bin, one of the others. But uh, yeah, I'm going to have to uh, maybe look for... I'd love to find a flawless version of the Ryko Disc uh, edition because it has those bonus tracks in it. But uh, I'll keep a lookout for it. Uh, and another Bowie collect, uh, CD. This is the only other one I have of his on CD. It is a two-disc best-of collection. And uh, yeah, really, I like David Bowie, just not enough to, <clears throat> to have really delved into the albums, at least not yet. And then we have Susan Boyle. Yes, the, the viral sensation, um, easy listening, uh, pop ballads uh, singer from the UK. And who wasn't wowed by that um, Britain's Got Talent clip that she was first discovered in? The, my favorite part of that clip was Simon Cowell's reaction. And he just, at one point during the video while she's singing, he just sat there and sighed like that. I mean, you never see Simon Cowell just captivated and swept away by music like that. Uh, you just never see that. So that was my favorite part of that whole video, was Simon's, that reaction from Simon. Just made the whole video. Anyway, I've also got Susan Boyle's sophomore album, Someone to Watch Over Me. It's good, easy listening pop stuff. You know, not everybody's cup of tea, but I like it. And then on into some R&B with Boys to Men. I've got their uh, debut album, Coolie High Harmony. Lots of good stuff. One of the highlights of R&B from the 90s. Yep, 1991. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, so uh, It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday, of course, one of the classics. And I thought there was another hit song on there, but I can't, couldn't see it on first glance of the track listing. And then their sophomore album, Two. And this one is was, oh, On Bended Knee and uh, I'll Make Love to You and Water Runs Dry. Some very, very good songs on there. Now we're going into some uh, late 90s, early 2000s boy, boy band pop with Boyzone by request. This is their greatest hits album. I used to have each of their studio albums as well as this one because this had a handful of uh, previously unreleased songs and bonus b-sides and stuff but i kind of cooled off on their stuff after a while until this is all i have left of theirs was a compilation uh you know i i've i've got a weak spot for boy bands what can i say and now we're getting into one of my favorite artists uh favorite current artists randall bramblett and i've got he recorded two albums way back in the i think the 70s i've <clears throat> excuse me and i've got the first one of those on vinyl don't have the second one. Then he took a break for, what, almost 20 years until, no, closer to 30 years, until 2001. And this, oh no, actually, no, he recorded an album in like 1997 or 98, and I don't have that one either. Uh, then this one is the next one he recorded. So this is like his fourth album, No More Mr. Lucky. And from then on, I've got uh, all of his albums, some of them on vinyl. This is the one that uh, brought me, brought him to my attention, Thin Places. I mentioned in my last video a magazine called Paste that used to have a sampler CD with every issue. That's how I discovered this guy, was there was a couple songs, or at least one song, from this album in a Paste sampler. Uh, Playing Card, that, that's a great song. I love that song. One of my favorite Randall, Randall Brandbutt songs, though, is Are You Satisfied? That's got a really cool, not quite a, well, I guess it does kind of have a world music sort of a sound to it, but it's very 
uh, epic, very kind of spacey and stuff. It's really, it's really cool, really cool song. And then um, Randall, uh, Randall Brownout's next album, Rich Someday. It's a really good one. And then Now It's Tomorrow and the song Sun Runs, which is the opening track on this album, is uh, probably my other favorite Randall Brownout song. Love that one. And onward from there we have the meantime, which was it was a an independently released album uh, in the middle of these albums from the New West label. So I'm not sure why he released this one independently, but this is actually a 10th anniversary edition, which was released by New West. So uh, it adds oh two uh, previously unreleased songs. Uh, this is one is not one of my favorite Randall Rambler albums, but it's, it's still really good. Everything he puts out is good. What can I say? And then the most recent one of his that I have on CD is The Bright Spots. I actually like this album so much I have it both on CD and on vinyl. And then from then on, all of his albums that I have are on vinyl. Uh, but uh, the great song from this album is called John the Baptist. So yes, I, I just gave you my three favorite Randall Brandbutt songs. Go check those out. And then we're, we move on to another independent singer-songwriter, Jay Brannon. Uh, this guy is kind of, uh, he's hard to describe. He's, his lyrics are really dark most of the time, but that's offset by an absolutely beautiful voice. He's just got this beautiful voice, kind of a, a an upper tenor, maybe a mid-level tenor. But, uh, I mean, he just, he just has this honey-sweet voice with these kind of uh, uh, dark and, in some cases, self-deprecating lyrics but an excellent artist, and uh, I've got his uh, follow-up album, In Living Cover. This is a covers album. And then his next uh, album of original material, Rob Me Blind. Uh, so yeah, very good stuff. And I don't think he's released an album since this one. I could be wrong. And then this one is a little bit of a uh, guilty pleasure of mine. This is actually a CD single. It's called Let the Music Heal Your Soul. It's got nice lyrics, maybe a little bit cheesy, but it's about uh, music having the power to heal your soul, which is, is something that I firmly believe in. But uh, if you look at the um, artists that are on here, we've got the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC are on here, as well as a couple of other artists that I am rather fond of. A lot of these, this was a European CD single, so a lot of these pop groups, the names of them are not going to be familiar to uh, anybody in the States, but. Uh, yeah, good stuff. And you will see a couple of the names that you saw on this thing later on in my CD collection. Then we have a very recent acquisition to my library. I think this one was in... One of these was on the dollar shelf at Epic Seconds, and the other one was in the freebie hall. I can't remember which is which. But we've got Toni Braxton, her self-titled debut album. Fantastic songstress. A great uh, R&B singer from the early 90s. Uh, we have another sad love song that's great, and uh, spending t spending my time with you, and you mean the world to me. That's a great one. Oh, breathe again, another really good one. And her sophomore album, Secrets, another. Not as many good songs on here as uh, on her debut. Unbreak my heart is a really good one. And is there another one? can't remember if there was another one on here that I really, really enjoyed or not, but uh, suffice to say, a good album. Then we have a, one of the rather exotic or interesting uh, things in my collection, Brazilian Girls. This is a group that they do, well, they're kind of like Pink Martini, although you probably won't get that reference. They're a pretty obscure band as well. But these guys sing in several different languages, and the, uh, the songs are mostly jazz, but they have kind of a, a some pop influences and some world music influences, a little R&B thrown in here and there. So, yeah, a very eclectic um, palette of sounds that they draw from. Really, really good stuff. And uh, their follow-up, Talk to La Bomb. Uh, yes, again, yes, they have songs in English, French, Portuguese, Spanish, and I think on at least one of these albums there's a song in German. So, uh excuse me so yeah good stuff and uh, then we have another artist I have what five albums by uh, in various forms uh, with a group and solo Edie Brickell and New Bo Bohemians with their debut Shooting Rubber Bands at the Stars this one uh, gave them I think their biggest hit 
which is what I am. This was back in the late 80s, uh, 1988. Just a very good album. And then their follow-up, Ghost of a Dog. It's uh, equally good, almost as good as their debut. And then we get into Edie Brickell's solo stuff. Uh, we have Picture Perfect Morning. And this one has uh, Good Times is one of her uh, bigger hits off of this album. And then her next sophomore, I think I might be missing one or two somewhere around in here. Uh, her next one that I have is Volcano. This was from 2005, I think? 2003. And I found this one up in Portland a couple years ago. And uh, <clears throat> let me take a drink here. I'm, I'm halfway, I'm to the halfway point, so. A good enough time to hydrate is when you're at the halfway point in your video, right? <clears throat> and then finishing off my Edie Brickell collection with her most, oh no, actually not her most recent album. There is one other one that they've put out since that I have not gotten around to listening to or picking up yet. But uh, Rocket is, she reunites with New Bohemians for this one. This one was put out in 2018. It's been that long ago already. Wow. <laughs> time flies by, doesn't it? And then we have one that a lot of you probably have not heard about. Uh, it's a group called The Bridges, and it is uh, four of these people are cousins, I think, and another one is, uh, I don't think, related. But yes, uh, four women and one guy, and one of the ladies is uh, the lead vocalist. Good stuff. Kind of kind of folk rockish a little bit, and actually kind of like Edie Brickell's, some of Edie Brickell's stuff, honestly, now that I think about it. And this was produced by Matthew Sweet, which was one reason why I kind of, uh, it got my interest. And I still remember where I got this one. I got this one at a Virgin Megastore. That tells you how long ago that was. Uh, this was uh, 2008, so pretty close to the end of Virgin Megastore, I believe. Uh, Might have been on my last trip to a Virgin Megastore. And heard it, uh, saw it on the CD listening stations, played a few tracks of it. This was before you could stream music on your phone. Uh, and liked what I heard and picked it up. So, and I... It almost fell victim to my last CD purge, but I gave it one last listen, and it uh, turns out it was too good to drop from my collection. So Then we're getting into a more recent acquisition of mine, thanks to a bargain bag video from last year. Sarah Brightman, I've got her album Eden, as well as La Luna, which is the one from the bargain bag that kind of got me to take a second look or listen to Sarah Brightman. Actually, first listen. I don't think I'd ever listened to her before. And then the only other album of hers that I have is called Symphony. And uh, each one of the albums has a cover of a song that I like uh, that was put out previously by another artist. Uh, this one is, uh, the example on this one is I Will Be With You, which um, under the title, when I first heard it, it was under the title Where the Lost Ones Go. And uh, on this one, she duets with Paul Stanley. Yes, Paul Stanley from Kiss, go figure and a good rendition, and lots of other very good uh, songs on here as well. I thought there was another cover on here that I kind of liked. I cannot see it um, at first glance, so anyway. Then we have a classic from the 80s, Bronsky Beat, with their album The Age of Consent. A uh, very good uh, album. Kind of a, a landmark album in um, LGBTQ culture. It was kind of, you know, they had hidden hidden messages in some of the lyrics and some of the imagery on the album for um, gay and lesbian kids, or, or, you know, not just not just kids. This is in the kids' album. It was from, uh, you know, <clears throat> meant for adults and teenagers and stuff. So just kind of, you know, sending out those little signals saying, hey, you guys aren't alone, which, uh, you know, was back in the early days, way before the Internet, uh, when, you know, LGBTQ... Uh, solidarity was hard to come by. So yes, uh, they, they did their part way back then to uh, help people come to terms with their uh, sexuality and whatnot and kind of helped to spark the whole uh, underground uh, gay culture and uh, eventually became what it is today. So yay. And then we have another um, uh, artist that I have. Uh, turns out I have five albums from her, uh, her and, and or her band, Jonathan Brooke. Uh, and this one actually was uh, is my most recent acquisition. It's the earliest of her albums that I have. Uh, this was on uh, in a freebies haul that I found just recently. Uh, it's an album called Plum. It's very, very good. And yes, she is one of these artists that I got one album, 
kind of liked it, so I decided to pick up another album and like that one too, and uh, you know, went on and on, and before I knew it, I had five of her albums. So there you go. Uh, and I have Ten Cent Wings, her one and only album on a major label. This was on MCA. And as is usually the case with major labels, uh, she was so good they didn't know what to do with her. And so she ended up leaving the major, leaving MCA, whether it was her thing or whether they dropped her, who knows. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, she did just fine without them. Uh, her next album is called Steady Pull. Sorry, <laughs> had to look at it. And this one features uh, duets with Michael Franti and Neil Finn. Neil Finn of Crowded House fame. So, so she knew how to pull the pull the names in, starting with some of these uh, albums. And then uh, this one is one that I, the one that I first, uh, the, the one of hers that first got my attention. And I think yet again, this was in another paste CD sampler, uh, Back in the Circus. And she actually does a couple of uh, covers on this one. Uh, Fire and Rain, the James Taylor song, as well as Eye in the Sky, the song by the Alan Parsons Project. And the other songs are just as good. So, yeah. Oh, and God Only Knows, a cover of the Beach Boys classic. One of my favorite classic pop songs, incidentally. And then here is the most recent album of hers that I have. It is called Careful What You Wish For, another fantastic album. Uh, she's just, yeah, this might be my favorite album of hers, actually. So, yeah. She is an excellent artist. I would recommend if you like uh, female folk pop singer-songwriters, check out Jonathan Brook. And then we have a one-shot album, and this one I think was only available as a physical CD, it was only available as a promo. I don't think it ever, at least here in the States. Uh, but yes, uh, Joe Brooks, uh, Constellation Me is the name of the album. Kind of a kind of a singer-songwriter. I think he wrote all these songs himself, uh, but a little bit more in the pop vein, kind of, uh, well, you know, he's young, he's a good-looking guy, so they kind of wanted to market him probably as a pop um, thing. So, yeah, some good songs on here, and uh, this was kind of like The Bridges. This one I almost gave up in my last uh, CD haul, but um, Rules of Attraction, that's probably the best song on this album, as well as World at Our Feet, the opening track, and uh, Superman is another good one. So, yeah, pretty good album. And then we have uh, one of the latest, most recent additions to my uh, collection, Bobby Brown with his album Don't Be Cruel, one of the classic R&B soul albums from the 80s. Uh, yes, 1988. Uh, the title track Don't Be Cruel, My Prerogative, uh, Every Little Step, three of the biggest R&B hits of the, of the 80s are on this album. And uh, then moving back to some earlier soul, uh, and this is again one of those uh, definitive collection series, Ruth Brown, an early, uh, well, well, 50s, 40s, 50s, um, R&B, rhythm and blues, and soul artist, a great, great singer. Uh, I heard about her, found out about her in a 10-part uh, documentary. Actually, I think I talked about it in a video, uh, a history, the history of rock and roll. Uh, she was uh, shown as being one of the pioneers in early R&B, which kind of gave way to rock and roll. Um, yeah, great, great singer. Uh, Mama, He Treats Your Daughter Mean is one of her biggest hits. And uh, yeah, great, great artist. Uh, one of the great little known artists of rock and roll history. Of course, more rhythm and blues history, but still, you know. And then we have the B-Side Players. Uh, I found this one, I think, at the in the two and a half dollar section at Epic Seconds. Never heard of these guys before and get, decided to give it a try. Fire in the Youth is the name of the album, and yes, it's got its uh, it's Latin rock, kind of like, uh, well, Latin rock slash R&B. So a little bit of Santana, a little bit of Ozo Motley, if you're familiar with them. Uh, but it's uh, some good stuff. Uh, about half of it is in Spanish and half of it's in English. But uh, yeah, very good stuff. And then uh, another one of my more recent acquisitions. I got this one last year. BTS, the best. This. It's in a slightly thicker than, than normal uh, jewel case. But yes, it is two discs and it is the Japanese import. So, yeah. I only heard a couple of BTS singles uh, by this point and uh, yeah, they just uh, got me curious enough that, uh, and this was actually at House of Records. For some reason they got it in. It was unusual to see them 
uh, get in a Japanese issue CD, you know, new as a new release. You know, it's, you know, they would probably buy them from people selling them to them, you know, to sell as used. But for them to get something in to sell as new, uh, it's unusual for them to do, to do that. So part of me just wanted them to make it worth their while to have gotten it in. So I bought it, but also I was very curious, uh, curious, curious enough to hear the rest of their songs uh, that I actually bought the CD. And uh, it was only actually it was only like thirty dollars. Was it thirty or was it twenty five? It was pretty inexpensive for a two disc Japanese import CD. So there you go. And now we're moving on to one of my favorite um, adult contemporary, I guess, or or. Uh, uh, traditional pop, that's that's the word. Tra traditional pop singers, Canada's own Michael Bublé. This is his debut album. I think I have all of his studio albums so far, as his sophomore album, It's Time. And this is a uh, Argentinian import, which has a couple of bonus tracks. Uh, Dream a Little Dream, the, uh, the song that uh, the Mamas and the Papas made famous. I love that song. And Mac the Knife. Kind of an interesting to have those back to back, right one after the other. Uh, but anyway, and an, another import version. Uh, this one is his next album, "Call Me Irresponsible." This is actually a two-disc set, uh, the deluxe two-CD tour edition. Uh, the second disc has some um, very, um, remixes and some extra songs on here. A couple of uh, three holiday songs actually are on the second disc. As you can kind of see the. Uh, track listing there. So, yeah. Then I have uh, another, uh, the Hollywood edition of Crazy Love. And this is, again, this has a second disc, a bunch of uh, live tracks and other assorted goodies. And yes, more, more often than not, I've gotten uh, expanded editions that have bonus tracks, whether they're the uh, an import edition or the Target version or something else, just because I like Michael Bublé's voice so much. And his uh, next album, To Be Loved, this has three bonus tracks. And it also features um, a duet with the Pupini Sisters, which is one of my favorite uh, contemporary close harmony groups, along with his fellow Cana Canadian Brian Adams, as well as Reese Witherspoon, an interesting choice, and Naturally Seven, which I am not familiar with. but uh, And moving right along through his discography, we have... Nobody But Me, and this is the it's the, the lenticular version with uh, a younger picture of himself and a uh, recent picture of himself. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And uh, Megan Trainer guest uh, guests on this album. That's one reason why I liked it so much. And uh, so, yeah. And then his most recent album, at least up until, what, about a month from now, he's putting out a new one. But his most recent album, Love. And so, yeah. And, but actually, I think this one actually was is not a deluxe version of any sort. This just is the regular studio version. So. And then also another artist that I have multiple albums by. He's one of my favorite contemporary artists. I love this guy to pieces. I love him more with each album he puts out. Jake Bug, uh, his uh, debut album, Self-Titled, as well as his uh, Rick Rubin-produced sophomore album, Shangri-La. Oh, and this one, what do I have as the... Oh, yes, I have the second disc... Uh, Piggyback on here is a live EP uh, that was available from a record, I think it was a Record Store Day uh, exclusive. So it's piggyback on here. And then his third album, On My One, which I love the cover art for this. I don't know why. it's. I don't normally like abstract art, but it's just a cool, cool cover. And this is actually the Japanese version. It's got two bonus tracks. It's got, there's the OB. Oh, and actually, I think... One of these, or maybe both of these, or first two albums also are uh, Japanese. Actually, this one I don't think is. No, the uh, Shangri-La was not Japanese edition. Uh, I showed you on my one, and the next one, Hearts That Strain, and this one also. This one has uh, one one bonus track uh, from Japan. And there you go. And his most recent album, which I don't think it well, it was released in Japan, but it has no bonus tracks, so uh, there's no reason for me to get it. But his most recent album, Saturday Night Sunday Morning, which I love, um, so yeah. love me some Jake Bug. What can I say? Great, great singer songwriter. He's got some Dylan in him, although um, that's much more prominent in his first 
couple of albums. He's kind of moved on and branched out from that, but he's no less great than he was on his first couple albums. And then we have a, an artist that I, I still want to get more of their albums than I have. I've only got their first two so far, uh, but I, I, want to, I just haven't had the chance to expand my collection from that point. The Birds with their debut album, Mr. Tambourine Man. And this is the deluxe remaster with a couple of bonus tracks. Actually, what, five bonus tracks? Six bonus tracks. And uh, also the remastered edition of Turn, 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 their sophomore album. So that's, those are the only two I have right now. And uh, yes, I do want to get more of them as, uh, as I remember to, I guess. I have a pretty big credit balance with House of Records right now, so I could be using that to uh, expand my collection there. But anyway, that is it for the Bs. We're moving on into the Cs. Long time no see. Anyway, lame joke, I know. Uh, starting out the Cs with C&C Music Factory. This is one of the premier, one of the top dance pop albums, uh, dance R&B albums of the 90s. It was released in 1990. So yes, uh, Gonna Make You Sweat, Everybody Dance Now. And it's probably their biggest hit. And Things That Make You Go Hmm. It's another standout um, album of theirs. So yeah, another party on a platter on this album. And I have not picked up their sophomore album just because it doesn't have nearly the hits or the, you know, that, that special ingredient, the everything in just the right proportions and just the right amounts, you know, those kind of albums. The sophomore album doesn't have quite that as uh, the debut album does. And here we have a little promotional EP or single. It's three tracks. But uh, Ryan Cabrera, and I will actually show you his actual album is, is next up, but uh, you get to see this first. Uh, yes, personally autographed by, uh, by Ryan, obviously. Uh, a friend of mine down in San Diego went to uh, check him out and had, had it autographed for me. So pretty cool. And then his debut album, uh, Take It All Away. Good stuff. It has not aged quite as well as um, other artists from the same uh, time period. This is from 2004. Um, pop, you know, kind of, uh, well, not even, not even indie pop, really. It's just, it's kind of cookie cutter pop, uh, although that's kind of selling it short. He's got a great voice. And he wrote most of these songs himself, I believe. But uh, yeah. just it's it's kind of doesn't isn't quite as special as it used to be for me. And oh, but again, this is a Japanese import. It's got one bonus track. Yeah, one bonus track from the American edition, or left off the American edition. That is. Uh, so yeah. I still keep it for its sentimental value. A very nice guy. I actually got to meet him later on after my friend Mark sent me that autographed uh, CD. But yeah, nice guy. And so I, I was kind of one of his early uh, early fans before he really hit it big for that brief moment in the uh, mid two thousands that he did. So, yeah. And now this next one you will recognize from a recent um, uh, bargain bag video, Cademan's Call, which is yes, it's a Christian band. Go figure, I decided to keep a CD by a Christian band. But uh, the lyrics, as I've mentioned before, uh, when the lyrics are much more obliquely and subtly uh, relating to those kind of things, when you can get other things besides praise and worship out of the same lyrics, I tend to find a little more value in the stuff, you know, because I'm not Christian, so the strictly Christian lyrical content is lost on me. So uh, yes, this was their debut album, so it was not quite as as high octane Christian as their more recent albums were. So, and it's good stuff too. Well, a little bit of a little bit of a world music, folk music vibe, which I kind of kind of like. And then we're getting into another artist that I have hmm, five albums by. So yes, I have quite a few artists. You will see I have multiple albums by, like more than three. Uh, we have Cake with their album Motorcade of Generosity. I believe this was their debut album. And uh, I discovered these guys only about a year, year and a half ago and ended up really enjoying them. Fashion Nugget is their next album after that. And we have Prolonging the Magic. And then comes Comfort Eagle. And I'd have to really listen to them again to tell you what my favorite albums of, album of theirs is. 
and then we have Pressure Chief, which is their most recent album of theirs that I have. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, one of the problems with having such a big CD collection is uh, I, I have so much, and it's it's hard to listen to all the stuff that I have to to get the time to listen to all the stuff that I have. So that's one reason why I'm I'm almost always at some point to some level guilty in a way of having so many CDs and there's this nagging thought in the back of my mind just purge some of the CDs you know take them to stores so that other people can buy them and take them home people who will enjoy them more or appreciate them more I've got that little constant little guilt inside of me so I figure when I finally retire from my job I'll have plenty of time to listen to all this stuff I'm going to stick with that thought and use that thought to push away the guilt that I'm feeling. That's That'll work, won't it? Anyway, uh, here we have, uh, I believe this guy was, was he an Idol alum? I can't remember, actually. But he's Australian, I know that. Anthony Kalea. Yes, I think he was a runner-up on one of the Australian Idol seasons. But yes, um, as with most Idol debuts, as I mentioned earlier, very much pop. But he's got a gorgeous voice. Uh, one of the best voices of any idol um, of any nation that I have happened across. And I've got his sophomore album, A New Chapter. And he, he cut his hair, as you can see, for this one. And then uh, a later album, I think I'm missing one album before this one. Uh, but this is a uh, an album of acoustic covers of popular songs from the 70s, 80s, 90s. Very, very well done. I really enjoyed this album. It's called Backbone. He does uh, at least one Michael Jackson song, uh, Man in the Mirror. He does Hold On, which was a Wilson Phillips song. We Belong, which was uh, Pat Benatar, I believe. And Higher Love, which was a Steve Winwood song. I mean, you know, that kind of gives you the idea of the repertoire that he does in this album. It's really good. <coughs> Excuse me. If you like covers albums that put a little bit of a different a uh, little bit of a different different twist, not a radical difference in the songs, but like in this case, all acoustic. Check out Backbone by Anthony Kalea. Very good stuff. Then we have uh, the only two albums, I believe, by a rock group called The Calling. They were from the early 2000s. It's very small print in blue against a back background. I don't know why they do that, because it makes it hard to read. So I can't tell you what date it is, what year it is, but uh, yes, Cam Camino Palmero is their debut album. Nice, uh, well, guitar heavy rock, but not hard rock. Excuse me, I'm a little burpy here. And their sophomore album, too. Uh, yeah, really good stuff. Uh, you may have heard a couple of, uh, they had a couple of big hits back in the, I think it was the mid 2000s. Um, Wherever You Will Go, that was their biggest hit. And then uh, We're Forgiven is one of my favorites on here. And Thank You is another really good one. And that, that's those are off their first album. And uh, Our Lives, that the song Our Lives off of Two was used as the theme song for some TV show, I think. And uh, Things Will Go My Way, as well as Chasing the Sun. Uh, so yeah, good songs between the two of these albums. So I would recommend checking them out if you like that rock very much you know major label rock doesn't take a lot of really of chances not it's not really radical you know stuff it's stuff that they stuff that they would put on the radio so you know and anyway the final cd in this chapter of my whole cd collection is the self-titled debut by the canadian tenors uh, it's, it's one of the uh, handful of cds i have that's in the the popra pop rock crossover or operatic pop crossover kind of stuff. Uh, I like stuff. Actually, this one was in my uh, sister's CD collection. That's one reason why I have it. Uh, sentimental favorite. I have to keep it for that reason. But uh, also, they got decent voices. And uh, one of the guys was actually asked to leave the group a couple of years ago because he said something. I can't even remember what it was about. It was, it was I think it was pre-COVID, so it wasn't about uh, masks or, or vaccines. But uh, I can't remember what he said. But... Uh, so, and, and I'll, actually, after this album, they just became the tenors. So, I, I don't know why they decided to drop the Canadian from their name. I mean, I, I, I always thought that Canadians took pride in being Canadian. So, come on, guys, what gives? Why'd you drop it? Anyway, uh, 
So that takes care of my uh, chapter three of my whole darn CD collection. I hope you guys have been enjoying this. I certainly have. Um, it gives you guys a little more insight into the crazy, the silly, crazy little things that I collect and listen to. And if there's something that, um, yeah, like I said, if there's something that you don't see here that you think I would really enjoy, let me know about it. And if there's something that uh, you saw in here that you really, really like that you say that, that I kind of had a eh, reaction to that you really love, you know, bring it to my attention. Tell me to, uh, you know, that I need to listen to it again to see if I can really, really appreciate it. Because that, that's, you know, the ultimate reason I buy these CDs is so that I can appreciate them, right? So, uh, yes, if there's something that I'm underappreciating that you think I need to appreciate more, let me have it. Unload on me, why don't you? Anyway, before this video goes on any longer, and all of this is actually, I think, the shortest yet of my CD collection videos, but anyway... That'll do it for Chapter 3 of my Whole Darn CD Collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video or go live. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob. See ya!